Can you hear me okay? Let me know if you can hear me. What's up, family? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, my husband says he's not hearing me. Let me see. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Okay, 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 we're good, 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 good. Hello, everyone, thank you for coming out. Those first few, you know, seconds are a little weird. You're like, can they hear me? And it's so funny because I'm looking at you guys, but I'm not, you know, I'm looking at names and I'm like, can they, it's, it's just a whole different ball game when you're doing a live. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm excited uh, about tonight because we're going to get into some amazing questions with answers. I'm praying that I can answer all of them for you guys, as many as I can. Let me know where you're coming in from. We got Chef Nads, we got Veronica, Sasha Shea, we have Zippy Spring. Hello, hello, beautiful ladies. You might get some gentlemen, we did last time. Uh, who else do we have? Who else do we have? We have Daya, we have Ivana, we have Birdie, we have Miriam, hey sis. Who else do we have? Who else do we have? Okay, this is this is awesome. Y'all, I had to do a second live, and let me tell you why. So for our first hair growth live, we had an amazing time. Let me know in the comments if you attended um, or if you watched the replay. Y'all, we had close to a thousand comments. You know, that was a lot for me. I prayed that God would bless it and that I would be a blessing to y'all, but it was overwhelming in a good way. And I got a flood of questions and unfortunately I couldn't get to all of them. So I was like, I have to have a second live for my people to answer questions, um, some questions from that live and new questions for tonight. Um, and I, so that's why we're doing the second one. I'm thinking about doing more of these. Uh, it seems like people were really receptive to it. Let me know if you want to do more, um, not just hair live, but maybe, you know, about other topics. Um, like I said, that last live, it was my first live. This is my second one, so I'm still a newbie. But if you want more lives, let me know. I, I want to bring you the best that I can. Okay, so like I said, Last live, we had tons of questions. And so for this live, I have consolidated a lot of those questions um, into groups. Um, and I'm going to do my best to answer the ones uh, that you give me tonight. For any new ones, I need you to drop a cue before your question. So I have a, where is the cue? Okay, just like that. Give me a cue before your question. That way I don't miss it and I know it's a question. Also, super, super chat questions get priority. If we run out of time and I can't get to your question during the live, I'll do my very best to answer them in the comment section of the replay as long as you can come back and post them there, okay? And quick disclaimer, y'all. Y'all already know this, but, you know, the information I share is designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on this information to replace medical advice, diagnosis, uh, and or treatment. If you have any questions or concerns about your health, you should always consult a physician. And in case we haven't met, I'm Elisa. I'm your girl. <laughs> and my passion is to empower you to reach your full potential to accomplish your unique, God-given purpose without poor health standing in your way, okay? Uh, and that's why I founded Choosing My Health, uh, CMH, a platform to help you easily transition to a whole food, plant-based lifestyle and thrive. And if this sounds like your vibe and you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. We would love to have you here. Me and my husband work as a team, that's why I say we. Um, and you know, this channel is going to provide you with encouragement, with recipes, plant-based education. Um, also don't forget to hit the notification bell for my latest videos. If that's something you need, you can also follow me on Instagram, um, and on TikTok at 
choosing my health as well. I am a certified health coach. I'm a certified personal trainer and a certified holistic nutritionist. And tonight I'm excited to get into these questions. But before I do, I wanted to just do a quick five minute recap of what we went over in our last live. Is that all right with y'all? Okay. Um, so you probably watched the last live. If you haven't, I think you really should. We went into a lot of valuable information um, concerning hair loss, hair growth, and, and everything in that category. Um, so if you haven't, please check that out. But really quickly, let me get to my secondary screen here. internal, excuse me, let me get back here. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? I hope you can hear me. But what I was saying, what I was saying is that uh, this is real life, y'all. <laughs> this is not pre-recorded. <laughs> so y'all, okay, great. So what I was saying is that this was me during the lowest parts, one of the lowest parts of my life. My hair was in a disarray because the inside of my body was in disarray. Um, I don't know if any of us, if, if you have that, that situation going on, but my hair was like this for a very long time. And I just had stunted hair growth and I did not understand uh, the impact of my internal wellness on my hair. I was really, really sick on the inside, which leads me to my second slide. So there are two very important components to optimal hair growth, and it's external hair care and internal care, okay? External care and internal care make all the difference when it comes to hair growth, all right? When you're lacking in these two areas, y'all, not only does your health suffer, but your hair suffers. And you can't have one without the other because they impact each other, okay? Now, when we did our first live, I talked about the four internal hair growth haters that will really damage your hair. And they are inflammation, poor circulation, vitamin and mineral deficiency, and hormonal imbalance, okay? Inflammation, I got that by eating a standard American diet. But later on, I transitioned to a standard American vegan diet. So I just took the meat and the cheese out, and I continue with the processed food. And y'all, it really played a number on me. It impacted my hair in such a way where it stunted my hair growth. And I even started getting patches in my hair. Okay. The second thing is poor circulation. Now, poor circulation is connected to healthy blood. When there is good circulation in your scalp, it stimulates hair follicles to grow healthy hair. And when there is poor circulation to the scalp, it can deprive follicles of blood and nutrients. Vitamin and mineral deficiency. 
So if you have a deficiency in iron, vitamin B12, and vitamin D, like that's that trifecta right there, if you're down in any of those, especially the three of them, you're going to have some type of stunted hair growth or hair loss even because it impacts the, uh, the hair growth cycle, okay? And then this fourth component here is huge, um, hormonal imbalance. It can directly impact hair growth by shortening your hair growth cycle. If you're dealing with you know, thyroid issues, for example, you probably already understand that, man, I'm having a hard time because my hormones are imbalanced and it seems to be affecting my hair. And this is what happens. Okay, so how did I rectify those four hair growth haters that I was going through, that a lot of us go through, okay? So what I decided to do was ab adopt a whole food plant-based diet. And when I did that, four amazing things happened to me. The first thing that happened to me is that my inflammation went down. My circulation went up. I began to fill in vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Praise the Lord. And I began to uh, balance my hormones because now I wasn't feasting on this synthetic food. You know, the processed food, all of that really plays a number on your health and your hair. And so what I decided to do after that is adopt this method and I shared it with y'all. I call it the DNSHP method, uh, the hair growth method. And the first thing on it is detox. Detox, I detox with a juice cleanse, um, tons of raw food, and it really helped to balance my body. The second thing I did was nourish. I began to do a whole food, plant-based, uh, you know, type of diet in every, like I, everything I did was now you know, fruits and vegetables and whole grains and nuts and seeds and legumes, uh, you know, all that good stuff. And it really began to nourish my inside. I began to take care of my scalp. I started putting on specific oils, um, an oil concoction that I make, and it, it began to nourish my scalp and repair my scalp. I began to take care of my hair, you know, wear my bonnet, my silk scarf to go to sleep, all of that great stuff. And then I also uh, started to protect it, making sure that I was using, you know, very low manipulation styles when I decided to uh, style my hair. And God is so good because my hair now is looking like this. Now, you saw that first picture. It took some time to get here. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. If you take care of your insides and you take care of your outsides, you can see amazing results, not just with your hair, but with your skin, with your body, with all of you. And so this is the reason why I'm here tonight to share, you know, what God did for me and to let you guys know that God can do it for you. And we are now going to transition into our question and answer period. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to answer one question from the past live. Um, like I said, it might be a question that, an, you know, that um, you might want to ask. So if it is, then great. But I'm also going to be answering, uh, you know, new questions from tonight. So we're going to go back and forth, back and forth. All right. And I plan to be on for about an hour or so. I don't want to make I don't want to take too much of you guys' time. But if I realize a lot of questions are coming in and you guys seem like you're really, you know, it's, it seems like it's popping tonight, then I might stay on a little longer. We'll see how it goes. OK, so I am going to go up and start with the first super chat from. OK, here we go. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I'm trying to make sure. I think I just missed it. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Thank you so much for your Super Chat Interversion FM. And your question for tonight is this. 
Living in Colorado, how many times a day should I oil my hair with store-bought products? Okay, so oil my hair with store-bought products. So the question I would ask you is, when you say store-bought products, are these just oils um, or are these, um, is this just oil, an oil-based product or is it like, uh, a product that has a bunch of other things in it, um, when I, you know, uh, you know, liquid, for example. And the reason I ask you that is because you don't want to suffer from product buildup. Um, what I do is I use I use oils in my hair, but when I'm wearing my hair and it's kind of straight state like I am right now, I might do it like maybe once a week. I have found that the oils are so powerful that I don't even have to use tons to see activation um, with growth in my scalp. I'm also doing this in conjunction with a bunch of other things that include water, exercise, internal care with the whole food plant-based diet. Um, and the oils have taken my hair a long way, but I think they have been maximized in their potency because of the other things I have been doing. Another question I would ask you is, um, if you're, if you're using your hair and it's more natural state, like, you know, wash and goes, then you might be able to tolerate, uh, more oil in your hair because you're probably washing your hair more frequently. Um, when I'm doing more of a wash and go style, or I'm doing more like, uh, you know, twists, two strand twists, cornrows, I can go, you know, three and four times a week. That's my scalp. But ultimately you have to figure out what is best for you. If you find that you're using it once a week, but your hair is asking you for more, then put more in. It's kind of like a not, you know, one size doesn't fit all. You kind of have to go to your unique needs. So test it out. Just do like one, one, you know, one day out of the week and see how it feels. If it's not feeling right, then, you know, taper it down or, or amp it up. Okay. I hope that helps. <laughs> But, you know, in general, I do once a week when I'm in my straight state and when I'm doing more of the, you know, wash and go type of deal, I'll do, you know, three to four times a week. All right. Let's see. Okay. And I just want to say thank you to Michelle M for your super chat gift. Thank you, sister. I love you. All right. Let's go to our next person. Okay. Right here. Okay. So, Gracious Hodges, I have been diagnosed with uterine fibroids. Will that affect my hair growth? Okay. So, fibroids can affect hair growth. Uh, number one, and I'm really sorry you're going through that, sis. Uh, fibroids can cause hormonal imbalances, you know, which can lead to hair loss. And number two, fibroids can produce symptoms like heavy periods, which can lead to decreased oxygenation of the blood. And we discussed in our first Hair Live, honey, that you need hormonal balance and proper oxygenation, oxygenation and blood flow to the scalp for optimal hair growth. Okay. If you don't have that, you're, you're going to, you're going to suffer. If your fibroids are causing you to lose too much blood, um, and throwing your hormones off, it can cause, you know, brittle hair, stunted hair growth, um, and hair loss. Now I do want to mention that for many of us black sisters, okay. Uh, we suffer from something from a type of hair loss that's called central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. Okay, that's a mouthful. C C C A, and there's research uh, that's indi that indicates that women with C C C A are five times more likely to also experience hair loss. Okay, and they have. Oh, oh I, let me say it this way. People with CCCA, women, are five times more likely to also have uh, uterine fibroids. So there could be a connection there. So it's extremely important that if you are experiencing hair loss, especially the type that leaves behind scar tissue like CCCA, um, that you see a healthcare professional 
to check if you have uterine fibroids, okay? If you do have uterine fibroids and you are expecting hair, if you're, and you're experiencing hair loss, it could be because of the symptoms, especially anemia due to a loss of blood. So it's really important that you increase your iron levels. Um, however, this will only do so much as long as your fibroid is still there and left untreated, okay? And a question I would ask myself is, why did I develop these fibroids in the first place? You really want to pay attention to that. Was it my diet, you know? Was it my exposure and consumption of, you know, synthetic hormones? Was it you know, due to a blockage of my uh, elimination pathways, you know, the liver, the colon, my skin? Was it a combination of things that included vitamin D deficiency? These are all important questions because you may opt to remove the fibroid, but if you're still living the lifestyle that promoted the fibroid, then you may develop more in the future. And then you're just going to go back to square one. You know, we don't want that for you, honey. So you have to treat the root cause. And a whole food plant-based diet uh, can definitely help you heal. And the good news is once you treat your fibroids, uh, the hair loss associated with the fibroid iron deficiency is reversible, okay? And remember to pay attention to keeping your iron levels up. Um, beets and blackstrap molasses will help you tons. Hope that helped. Okay. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. Layla. I think it's Layla next. Let me put it here. Okay. How do you feel about Ayurvedic Indian hair growth treatments? Have you tried it and what were your results? Oh, girl, I love them. I love them. I love them. Listen, a lot of the oils that I use are a lot of the oils that you'll find in a lot of these treatments. Um, things like fenugreek um, oil, things like um, different type of herbs, amla oil. They're amazing because a lot of them have hair growth activators. And hair growth activators are amazing to stimulate uh, hair follicles uh, to produce, you know, healthier, stronger tresses. Um, so I'm all down for them. Um, I'm about to try a new one soon. It's the, what is it? It's like a, ma it's like a maca, matcha. I don't, I'm not, okay, not maca. It's like a, it's like a green tea, basically, a green tea powder um, matcha. And you mix it with oil and then you do a deep treatment on it. I have to look up, uh, you know, what I found about it um, in terms of how to do it. But I'm really excited because I've heard that people get great results with it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's awesome and you should experiment with them because you might find something that really works for your hair. I know fenugreek is, is the real deal and that's something that they use a lot. Yeah, so I feel good about them. All right, let's see. Okay, Marie Cottom. What if you are taking a blood thinner? I understand that vitamin K you should not take. All right, Marie. So you're probably referring to me sharing how I took vitamin D3 with K for better absorption. So what I understand is that not all blood thinners interact with um, vitamin K. So ask your physician about your specific medication. And while vitamin K rich foods each day help ensure a healthy, you know, well-balanced body, don't go against what your doctor has advised, you know, for your specific needs. So definitely consult your, your physician about that one. All right. Hope that helped. Okay. Next one here. Marva Daly. Okay. Did you use the carrot or cucumber juice directly on your hair? Okay. So I did talk about juicing carrots and cucumbers. So I drank them. I juiced them and I drank them. So I use them internally. Uh, they have uh, cucumbers are, are, are an amazing uh, vegetable that God has given to us because they have um, 
sulfur and sulfur is amazing for hair growth. And then um, carrots have biotin B7, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, you can experiment trying to use them on your hair i have seen people who have used you know carrots carrot oil is amazing um they have used carrot juice they've sprayed it on their hair and they've you know i've seen great results for some people so you could try it if you want but what i did the method i used for these cucumbers and for the carrots is just juice them and i, ju I juice them regularly regularly in fact sometimes i take cucumber and i may put it in my smoothies like you can hardly taste it Okay, uh, let me drink some water here. How you feeling, fam? Okay. All right, here we go. What do you think about box braids? This is coming from Nessa. Uh, what do you think about box braids? Is it safe? So I think box braids can be an Excellent protective style option, um, especially if you want to give your hair a bit of a rest, honey. Okay, but like any braid style, you know, damage can occur if they are left in too long. You don't want to leave in a style for too long, any type of style, um, especially one that's going to be, you know, pulling at your, your hair follicles for too long. You also want to make sure that they're not too heavy. You want to make sure that they're not too tight. And when they are too tight, uh, you can get traction alopecia, uh, alopecia uh, and which is hair loss due to repetitive tension on the hair. So braids can be really helpful. I braid my hair sometimes. Um, just make sure that they're not hurting your hair. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Annabelle, how to maintain natural hair while working out often i understand you girl products wash day frequency it's what your hair can tolerate i know there are some sisters that they have shorter hair you know they rock a shorter style on purpose and they're good they just wash and go and it works for them so it really depends on the type of hair you have are you a wash and go girl or are you a girl that likes to you know rock their hair straight at times like I do. Um, I know that when I work out, um, I usually put a head wrap on or like a, a bonnet that's tight enough to kind of keep my hair in place. And what happens is, you know, I, you know, my, I, my roots, they do puff up a little bit, but that's just something that I feel like the the benefit from exercise is so much greater than a little puffing up in my hair. But what I would suggest for you is maybe try some protective braiding styles. Um, maybe use some braids. One second. Okay. Maybe use some braids um, where you don't have to touch the hair for a long time. If you're someone who, who just cannot touch your, you know, you just don't have time for your hair. You might be able to even um, do some wash and goes. You know, I don't know if you're that type of girl. You know, uh, maybe you can corn roll your hair. Um, but if you're going to wear it in a straight state, you know, definitely, like, just don't exercise, you know, with your hair out. You know, definitely want to keep it under wraps so it doesn't get tangled. And use something maybe like a silk scarf or a headband or something like that to kind of tie it in place. Um, products. Did you ask products? Let me just go back. Um, the products I use, you know, I'm not really a product junkie, so I don't use specific products when I work out. It's really then like when I'm um, kind of just maybe for maintenance. Um, but if I'm like to re if I'm going to retwist my hair after I work out, like I kind of sweat it out right here, I might use my herbal rinse um, spray that I make that also has a lot of hair growth activators. And then I might use like a sealing oil to like seal in that moisture. Um, so yeah. Okay. Let me see here. Lanique, how much molasses to lemon ratio to take for iron increase? Okay, so to increase my iron levels, um, I did one tablespoon of blackstrap molasses. 
um, with about a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice and water every morning with a straw um, because the straw protects your teeth from lemon juice, you know, corroding at your enamel. So you want to be careful with that. You know, maybe like rinse your mouth right after. Um, some people do it with lemon juice. Um, I like the lemon because vitamin C is like the real deal. It's going to help you absorb that iron, um, increase, you know, that iron absorption. But any type of vitamin C works. It doesn't have to be lemon. And I might add that if you are low in iron, um, just make sure why. Because anemia can be the result of multiple causes. So you want to get to the root cause, right? Is it because of heavy be bleeding? If it is because of bleeding, what's causing you to bleed? You know, is it medication? Because that can happen. Is it a fibroid? Is it something else? Again, always try to find the root cause because ultimately you want complete healing and you deserve that. All right, let's go to our next question. Nadette, what, what type of shampoo and conditioner do you use? The natural ones are still irritating my skin tremendously. They make my skin itch so bad once uh, they touch it. Wow, I'm so sorry about that. So you're probably someone who's super sensitive, uh, you know, to, to products, even the natural ones. So I make a lot of my own stuff, but a company that I've used that I really do like is called Just Nutritive. Just Nutritive. Their stuff is very mild. Um, you know, I use it on my kids' hair as well, and they haven't broken out. My daughter has very sensitive skin like I do, and... It, it, it's worked fantastic for us. I mean, maybe you could try their line. Um, and then in terms of conditioner, um, I like to kind of make my own conditioners with a mix of water and oil. Um, I might do avocado in there. Um, but I find that I don't need as much conditioner because, like I said, y'all, I use a lot of oils in my hair, and it kind of just keeps my hair really hydrated um, or rather moisturized. So, um, you know, maybe you could try switching to a little bit more oil and, you know, balancing that with some water, making sure that you're not going overboard with the oils because you, you know, what you don't want to do is cake your hair up with tons of oils, tons of oils, tons of oils, and never wash it out. Like, that's not good. So you have to find that balance between your wash day and your, your oiling. But, you know, check out Just nu Nutritive. I know um, the, melanin the melanin line is also nice. I've used a leave-in conditioner from them, and I, I thought it was pretty straight. I liked it. So you could try that too. I know they sell them at Target. I don't know if everything is 100% natural in it, but uh, from the looks of it, most, most things are pretty good. So maybe you could check out that line too, melanin. Okay. Y'all know I need my water. Okay. Ariel. Ariel, do you have specific smoothie recipes for hair and skin health? I don't have a juicer. I understand, honey. There was a time when I didn't have a juicer either. Actually, I do have some smoothie recipes that are great for hair and skin. You can find them on uh, my YouTube channel, Choosing My Health. Um, I also dropped my recipe playlist link in the chat for your convenience, okay? So I have the Beet Bliss recipe. It has beets. Um, which are fantastic, you know, they're a fantastic source of iron for your hair. I have one called uh, Green Grace, which has cucumbers, and cucumbers are high in silica, which strengthens, you know, the hair. I also have one called Pineapple Lime Love my husband came up with, and it is amazing. You know, pineapples help the body synthesize um, collagen, which helps the skin to stay firm and flexible. So yeah, you know, all of those could be helpful for you. And also, don't be scared to get creative, honey, you know, and make your own smoothies. As long as, you know, they have healthy hair ingredients, like cucumbers and greens and pineapples and all that good jazz, I mean, you can, you can make so many different tasty combinations and, and really start to see amazing results in your skin, in your hair, in your bowels, and, and all that great stuff. And, and stuff that you probably already have in your fridge. So you know, while I do have recipes, get, get, get creative and, and start to feel confident enough to even make your own. All 
right, let's go to our next one. Let's see what type of shampoo. Okay. Go to ch Here we go. All right, China. Last live, you spoke of ingesting daily black strap molasses. I purchased but saw a warning label that it contains a chemical that is carcinogenic. Were you aware of this? Okay, it's possible that you purchased something from California because I know that they have a, like a, a label on their stuff um, that they, they have to, you know, tell people um, – it's something that has to do with carcinogens, but it's nothing to really be scared of at, at, at all. If you don't feel comfortable with black strap molasses, don't do it, honey. Um, maybe find another one that doesn't contain um, carcin, you know, that doesn't have that label that you're, you feel comfortable with. I get organic, unsulfured black strap molasses to be specific. I've used many types of brands throughout the years. I've never, me personally, I've never had um, a reason for concern. You know, there were times when I even took black star molasses as a child, but obviously you have to go with your convictions and um, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. But if you look into it and you realize, oh gosh, this is something I don't wanna take, don't do it. I know that the root of molasses comes from sugar beets, and sugar cane, it's like the um, it's like the last of its product um, when you're you're processing you know those things. Um, I don't know the exact process of making molasses, but I know that that that's the root of it. You know, sugar cane or um, sugar beets, and it's fantastic. Has tons of minerals, but don't do it if you're not comfortable. Never do anything you're not comfortable with. Okay, let's see here. Okay, V the Believer, can gray hair be reversed due to a total plant-based diet? Okay, honey, that's, that's a good question. So there are many reasons for hair turning gray. Iron deficiency, zinc deficiency, hormonal imbalances, um, if it's for one of these reasons, your hair is turning gray, a total whole foods plant-based diet, you know, can help slow the graying process because it's full of nutrient-rich foods. Um, you also want to look at the root cause of, of anything outside of that, okay? Maybe you're, you have a, um, an illness that you're dealing with that's actually robbing a lot from your body. That could be uh, one of the reasons as well. And when one thing about whole, the whole food plant based the whole foods plant based diet, and I'll always champion this type of lifestyle because it's what healed me. It's what God used to heal me. And when you eat these these type of foods on a daily basis, those gaps begin to fill. If you are deficient in one of those areas, you know the iron and the zinc, and you also begin to fill in um, any areas where you may be off. So like any. You know, you start to balance your hormones. Your body begins to heal, and it impacts your hair. Now, can you reverse the hair color once it's already gray? So change the color of your shaft? Um, it is possible, okay? It is possible. I do know that there is research, research that shows that the herb FO-T, that's F-O-T-I, has a positive impact on gray hair as it can, you know, potentially darken the hair and delay the onset of new grays. Kind of cool, right? So it, it is possible, maybe not common. And does it work for everyone? Maybe not, but it is possible. Okay, let's go to our next person. Okay, here we go. Layla, what remedies do you have for a receding hairline and or hair thinning along the hairline asking for a family member? Okay, that's, that's cool, girl. So what I did for mine, um, I had a, a patch in my back, but I also had a receding hair, kind of like I started to lose a lot from my edges. As you can see, my edges are pretty good. 
Um, right here, this was my worst one, and my hair has grown back tremendously in this area. And it was really bad here, and my hair has grown back here. Now, what did I do to, you know, get my hair back? Because a lot of it, a lot of it, like I'm still recovering, but a lot of it around my edges, you know, fell out after I had my third child. What I did was, and my husband just reminded me after I got COVID, like, whoo, girl. That COVID played a number on my hair. I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to recover from this. But I went right back to my DNSHP formula. Um, and I started, you know, I did like a detox. I began to do, I did a juice cleanse. And then I began to hike up my nutrition. In fact, I put in some supplements, you know, because I, I felt like the sickness and the postpartum, like that really played a number in robbing me from a lot of vitamins and minerals. So I began to supplement with some vitamin D, extra B12, hike up my iron, and I began to see my hair started filling in again, especially in those areas. My patch started to fill out, and that was like, the patch was like way, way back. But, you know, these areas more re recent in my life, you know, the hairline, and it helped me tremendously. Another thing that you can do are oils, you know, your family member can do are the oils. My oils have helped me tons. Um, and it's specifically carrier oils with essential oils, essential oils that have hair growth activators like rosemary, lemongrass, um, peppermint. And you want to be very careful. You don't want to put them on your scalp directly because that will play a number on your hairline or your scalp. But what you want to do is take some of that, um, and I don't have the exact ratios right now. I am making one for y'all. If you're interested, you know, um, you can visit, you know, choosingmyhealth.com slash Cressador. I'll, I'll throw in a link in the chat um, for the, the, the mix I make if you're interested. But uh, carrier oils with the essential oils mixed together, a lot more carrier oil than essential oils, and you want to start to baby those areas as much as you can. And um, hopefully they can restore your, um, your hairline. Also, make sure that you're not using any styles that are going to be pulling at your edges because that's going to take, that's going to that's gonna lead to um, hair loss in those areas as well. And you want to be careful with the, the type of hair scarf you use at night. Make sure it's not too tight around that area. Okay, here we go. Hope that helped you, honey. Okay, Jessica. Jessica says, what's the fastest way to bring down inflammation? My hair is balding and my face is hit with bumps. Girl, don't I know how that feels. So everyone is different, Jess. Um, everyone is different. Not everyone responds to, let's say, juice fasts uh, the same way. Some people take longer to see results. Some people see them right away. It really depends on your body. Um, what I would say, though, is that the most effective way to bring down inflammation is through any method that's going to open every pathway of elimination, also called your detoxification pathways. So that's your skin, your lungs, your kidneys, your colon, and your liver. If these are backed up, you know, or clogged up, your body cannot eliminate the harmful substances that your body is trying to, you know, to fight off because that's why the body is inflamed. How do you do this? So one of the fastest ways I have done th I've done this is with a juice cleanse. Um, in addition to drinking tons of water to open these pathways. However, some people do it by water fasting, which can be super helpful in quickly balancing your body. Um, it's also free. Some people do it with intermittent fasting. So fasting for a, a certain number of days, um, rather a certain number of hours um, of each day. The best, fastest, and most effective method is going to be the one you actually end up doing, right? And 
and one that's also most sustainable for your lifestyle because it's not one size fits all. I can say I do a juice fast, but that may not work for you. You would probably rather a, a water fast. You know, you got to do what works for you because at the end of the day, it has to work for you. And don't forget that simply changing your diet and eating more whole foods while eliminating inflammation causing foods like meat and dairy and processed foods is still extremely powerful in healing the body quickly and bringing down inflammation, okay? Bringing down inflammation along with exercise and drinking tons of water. Like, it's amazing when you finally just say yes to like mostly all plants or all plants. It, it's, it's so healing to the body. I know what it's done for me and many others. Hope that helps. Okay. Okay, purity in plants. Hey, hey. How can you stimulate your hair without rubbing your hair out? I'm sorry. How can you stimulate your hair, your scalp, without rubbing your hair out? Uh, did you mean oils without rubbing your hair out? I'm not too sure. Um, how can you stimulate your hair, your scalp? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna assume it's oil without rubbing your hair with oil. Um, well, it, it, that's you're gonna have to then rely on internal things. Um, one thing you can do though is the herbal uh, rinse that includes herbs that are amazing for your hair. Our hair is hydrophilic, meaning it loves water. It just eats it up. So you could do a a hair rinse with like. Then a Greek matter of fact, I'm making one for y'all right now. I'm formulating and I'm testing it um, because I use um, a mix that has like lavender and vinegar, faux tea, uh, dandelion root, burdock root, a lot of herbs that kind of just strengthen the scalp. Um, and if you didn't want to use oils, you could use that instead. Um, and remember, you don't have to use oils a lot like if you're scared to use oils, you could use them a little bit and you can still see a lot of, of impact on your scalp with even, bit, with even just a little bit of oil. Okay. What was that? Mm -hmm. Your hair out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Girl, I'm sorry. So I think my husband just said, how can you massage your scalp without, like, rubbing your hair out? So I guess maybe you're really tender-headed. Maybe that's the case. So if, if rubbing your hair is a problem for you, just put it on and just let it rest. Just don't rub it, okay? I mean, that's what I would do. Like, if, if rubbing your hair is a problem for you, then maybe just gently pat it. Um, you, you might, your, your, your scalp may be tender. And if it is, you want to respect that because your body is telling you something that it's, it's not liking and it's for a reason. I hope, I hope those were helpful. Okay. Let's see here. And my husband's right here with me because he knows I can't do this alone. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. Um, our next question here, Ari. So, what's the best tip you've given to help me with postpartum hair loss? Ari, I understand. I just went through that. Um, so, and I'm still recovering. So, one of the reasons we experience excessive shedding after we give birth is because of the sudden dip in hormones. Okay, remember. When you're pregnant, there are hormones that actually prevent your hair from normal shedding. Once your hormones return to normal after pregnancy, there's a drop in estrogen, which causes hair shedding to resume. So it may seem like a lot of hair at first, but it's the hair that was supposed to come out anyway, okay? And I was actually really happy when I found that out. However, the problem is when it goes beyond on that okay it can go beyond that because a lot of times as new moms 
we're not sleeping. We're not eating. We barely keeping afloat. We is stressed, okay? Which means the body is stressed. And it is quickly depleting itself of minerals and vitamins. If this is your case, the number one thing you can do is give yourself permission to eat. I know that probably sounds really kindergarten, really basic, but it's the truth. Eat enough, okay? Feed your body with life-giving, nutrient-rich foods to sustain your new demands. Pay attention to your iron levels. And this is for everyone, not just for postpartum individuals. Your vitamin D levels, all right? Because as women, especially, we be given and given and given. And by the time we realize that we need to pour into ourselves, it's too late. We've already run out of gas. So pay attention to your vitamin D levels. Pay attention to your B12 B12 levels. Drink enough water. Don't forget to pay attention to your needs while you're taking care of the needs of others. All right? Sleep when you can. Sleep is so huge. Don't wear any styles. In fact, when I, okay, let me go back to the sleep. I was about to say, you know, styles that can, you know, mess with your, your hair follicles, but you got to sleep. And I know it's hard as a new mother to sleep, but as soon as you get a chance to even take a 15 minute cat nap, do it. Because when you sleep, there are certain repairs that take place in the body that are not taking a place, you know, when you're awake, you know, that's why God made sleep is for a reason. So when you can finally start to get a a good rhythm to go to sleep, do that because sleep is healing just as much as eating is healing. You can eat all the plants in the world, but if you're not sleeping, you're not going to thrive. Also, don't wear any styles. Like I was saying, to excessively pull on your edges, you know, that's going to hurt your hair follicles. And if you're experiencing a lot of hair loss on your edges, like I I alluded to, or like I said earlier, um, a good quality hair growth oil can go a long way. Gently rubbing that in three to four times a week. Listen, that area right there, like, listen, this area right here, it was like gone. And as you can see, I have a bunch of baby hairs. And what I started to do is I started to do that oil. Um, yeah, I went back to my method and it just whoop, started growing in, starting growing in. Um, and if you want that oil or if you're, you can get, you just use any oil if you want. Um, if you want one um, that I have formulated, you could find that at choosingmyhealth slash crestador.com for more info. But remember, it's oils in combination with the most important thing, and that's internal wellness, sweetheart. Something I think a lot of moms and even and ladies in general tend to neglect. Um, but if you can focus on strengthening your diet and maybe adding some oils to stimulate hair growth and stop ex- any excessive shedding, I have faith that you're going to bounce back. Okay. Let's see. Person is. Okay. All right. Henrietta Collins. So you're asking, sweetheart, how often do I work out? Okay. So that's an area that I am kind of struggling in right now. I won't even lie. Um, when I'm consistent, I will do four to five times a week. Um, four to five times a week just seems like the sweet spot for me because, um, well, honestly, I can't give a lot of time to exercising. There was a season in my life where I was doing like an hour and a half in the gym, and that was amazing. Um, I ran track in high school, and so I, I, and I, I did some, uh, you know, after high school, I, I continued to run, and it was awesome. But I, my life as a mommy with the tr- three children, taking care of a lot of things, um, has definitely kind of slowed down my workout abilities. Um, but I, I try to do at least, you know, four to five times a week when I'm consistent, you know, in like 30 minute intervals. Sometimes that's a walk, some walk, sometimes that's strength training. Um, but 
Right now, I'm fitting in about two to three times a week, but I'm trying to get back um, to that ultimate for me. And it's different for everyone. You know, you have to do what works for you. And if three times a week works for you, I know it does for some people, then you stick to that. And really, any type of exercise is better than no exercise. And you don't have to do two hours in the gym to see results either. Um, in fact, you could do a quick, you know, high intensive, you know, interval uh, type exercise for just 15 minutes every other day. And that that can do wonders for you, okay? And it also depends on your goals, but that's how much I do. Okay, let me see here. Okay, someone asked me about micronutrient testing on our last live. Now, micronutrient testing can show you if you're deficient in any micronutrients that could be responsible for your hair loss, stunted hair growth, um, and other you know major health issues, you can get one done at Let's Get Checked. Okay, Let's Get Checked. Their tests are physician approved, and they make it really easy to get tested for vitamin deficiencies hormone imbalances. Um, they have tests for women's health, men's health, sexual health, um, all types of different wellness tests. Um, and so you can do these from the convenience of your home. I was recently able to secure an affiliate, affiliate link for you guys where you can get 25% off um, your test. Um, I'm in the process of securing that link for y'all. Um, it's in the process of getting done, but I was, I was able to get that discount for y'all. So what I'm going to do is as soon as that link comes in, I'm going to post it in the community post on my YouTube channel. And I'll also post it underneath this video's replay. Okay. If that's something you need, that's amazing because it will bless you with the 25% off, but it also blesses me because I get a commission and it's going to help support CMH and serve you, um, you know, with trans transformative content. Like that's my goal to not just give you content, but content that's really going to get to the root of your cause and transform your life so you could thrive. Um, so look out for that link um, very soon if you're interested. Okay, and that's from Let's Get Checked. Okay, let's see here. Okay, A. Jones. How do you prevent losing hair when transitioning to a whole food plant-based um, or vegan diet? I've noticed some, uh, some woman's hair gets thinner during the transition, and it's true. And I think um, a part of it is because, oh, let me put your question up here, A. Jones. I think that one of the reasons is because you're not eating enough food, okay? It's so crucial you know, not eating enough is linked to so much. When you don't eat enough, your body is saying, hold up a second, we're going in starvation, we're going into starvation mode. And when your body thinks it's going into starvation mode, it begins to deprive your, your body of some things that don't necessarily need the vitamins, like your hair, okay? So you want to make sure you're eating enough and you're eating a variety of foods, when I went vegan and my hair started to go through, you saw the picture, okay? Uh, my, my hair got so bad because I was not eating enough. I was not eating a quality diet. I was eating a lot of processed foods. I was not eating nutrient-filled, um, rich foods with tons of vitamins and minerals that my body was craving. Instead, I was just feeding it with junk and processed food and packaged food and a lot of veggie meats. Like that was like the bulk of a lot of my food. And it began to play a number on me and you could see it in my skin, you could see it in my hair. Once I transitioned to eating a whole lot more raw foods and eating enough raw foods and then making sure I was doing a lot of legumes and whole grains, you get the point. The more I began to eat and the more variety of what I began, like more of the rainbow I began to eat, 
I began to see a difference in my hair. And I think that's why a lot of women experience or men even experience hair loss or thinning when they transition to a diet, um, to the whole foods plant-based diet, is because they're, they're just not eating enough. You, 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 you don't want to just live off of salads. Like, you got to give your body more than just salads. I'm sorry. If you, wanna, if you want to see abundance, give your body an abundance, okay? And if you're not too sure um, what you should be eating, I have a couple of videos that kind of spell out what a whole food plant-based diet is. I'll put the education playlist in um, the channel chat for you, um, the live chat, and I think that's going to help orient you. There's a couple of recipes on there to help you out as well. And, and it's, it's not a deprivation diet. It's a diet where you eat an abundance of the plants that God has given us to enjoy and to heal the body. Okay, someone asked a question about my hair regimen. Okay, so I kind of answered that in my last live, but I'm going to kind of spell out some things that I do. Um, so I cleanse my hair every month or so, uh, and depending on my style, I may shorten or lengthen that time. So if it's in its straight state, it can be up to five weeks until I, I, I wash and shampoo my hair. I know some people can go longer than that. Um, some of us sisters can go longer. Some of us can't. Um, it all really depends on the style. If it's in a two-strand twisted uh, style on wet hair, it can be three weeks. Um, I condition my hair as well. You know, before I wash my hair, I might do a deep conditioning treatment with a blend of oils and aloe vera gel avocado. It all depends on what I have on hand and what I have in my fridge. Um, but sometimes I do my deep conditioning after I wash my hair. Um, so it can just kind of like get all of them on my, on my shaft. Um, yeah. And when I do it after, I make sure that I put like a cap on um, and I kind of just let it sit in for like 30 minutes maybe. Um, I might go under a dryer. I don't do that as much anymore, but sometimes what I'll just do is put a towel over my head, you know, the plastic cap on, and then the towel to kind of like get that steam action going. When I do straighten my hair, I will only straighten it once. And I'll have that press in for buku weeks. That's how I've been able to protect my hair from excessive heat damage making sure that I don't straighten at a super high temp. Um, when I moisturize, to moisturize my hair, I may use a hair lotion or a leave-in conditioner, um, an herbal refresher spray that I make, which is nice and light. And it's great um, because our hair is very hydrophilic. Like I said, it likes water. The herbal spray also has a lot of hair growth activators. Um, I'm actually working on an herbal blend for y'all, like I said. And it's going to be released with the hair oil um, that I'm making. Um, the two together have worked wonders for me. And then I seal that moisture in with a sealing oil, maybe like jojoba oil um, or, or sweet almond oil. And that's worked great for me. I also use my hair growth oil throughout the week, which helps me to maintain my hair growth. And um, if if I feel like I need it a little bit more, then I'll use a little bit more of it. If I feel like I need to taper it down, I'll do that. It all depends on the season of my hair. And, and it's an also an awesome treat for my, for my scalp. I also make sure that I dust my ends frequently. You know, I, I will dust my ends, so like I'll like clip my ends. Um, I don't like chop every, every time. Like it's just a little bit of a dust. I'm making sure that I'm like looking for my 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 split ends and I'm like, oh, no to you, no to you, no to you, um, for example. And that's kind of really helped me retain length. And I do a lot of low manipulation styles like flat twists and two strand twists and corn rolls. And during the season of my life, this one, because this one's a busy one. I rarely do wash and goes um, because it's a lot of maintenance. I have a lot of hair. 
and I prefer a style that I don't have to touch for weeks because I'm living, you know, that busy mama life. Um, and so just doing something that I don't have to touch for a long time, it just helps you. It's just just so helpful right now. When I do detangle my hair, uh, I use my fingers. Um, I'll use a wide tooth comb and I make sure I detangle my hair as best as possible before I wash um, my hair. It makes wash day so much easier. I hope that helps. All right. Let me see here. Cole sent a super chat gift. Thank you so much, Cole. God bless you. Love you. Appreciate it so much. All right. All right. So I've been on for about an hour. Howie, I'm going to go a little bit longer. I don't want to take too much of y'all's time. Um, but if you guys would like to see, do more of these, you know, question and answer, you know, live sessions, not just about hair health, but about other things, let me know and let me know what the topics are specifically. I'm going to answer, I'm going to continue answering some questions if that's okay with y'all. Let me know in the comments how, how, how we're doing. Just let me know, drop it in the comments. Um, just want to make sure I'm not exhausting anyone. Sister Gladys also gave a super chat. Thank you so much. Love you, sis. You know, all of this support means so much to me. The fact that you guys came out like today, y'all don't know, but there was a lot going on with me today. Like, so I'm going to be honest. This is just going to be a little break. But I believe in what I call spiritual warfare. Um, and spiritual warfare is happens, I believe, when God knows he is, when the enemy knows that God is up to something to deliver and release people, to bless people. He's scared of something that you have to give to the world. And my week was going good, but today it's like every single thing that could have happened, happened. In fact, moments before I got on this live, my son got bitten up by a lot of ants. I'm like, how did this even happen? Like literally minutes before, if I came on and I looked a little frazzled, it's because I was, I was in mommy duty doing what I could to take care of him. But what I'm trying to say is this, there is something that is so powerful tonight. And I wanna take this moment to speak into y'all's life. I know you came on to hear about hair. You came on to, maybe restore your, your hair health. But I want you to know that all things are possible in Christ. There was a season in my life where I did not feel like I could heal. I was constipated. I had acne. My hair was not growing. I went down to 98 pounds. Sister was looking like a skeleton, okay? People would talk about me behind my back. And on top of that, I, I had a pre-diagnosis for leukemia. I was in a very low place and I called out to God and I asked God to heal me. And I said to the Lord, if you heal me, I will tell people about what you were able to do with me. And I took the plunge and I decided to go all in with plants. And I'm here standing as a living testimony of what God is able to do. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know who needs to hear that tonight. But I feel like that was the thing the enemy was trying to stop me from sharing with someone tonight. Yes, these, these answers to these questions about hair. But someone on this live needs to know that God restores. Someone probably just got a message from the doctor about being terminal or about cancer coming back or about I don't know what it is. But if God was able to heal me. He can heal you. And at the end of this, we're going to have, you know, one thing that I love to do is pray for my people because I believe that more prayer, there's more power. I know what God is able to do for me, but I vow to always share this testimony of how God healed me 
because since I've been doing it, I've been seeing a lot of deliverance in people's lives. And so I think that's why I was dealing with so much spiritual warfare before this live, because the enemy knew that someone was going to receive their deliverance. And if that's you, I believe it's you. I want you to receive it. Okay. Okay. Let's resume. Simone Roper, thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Let's see. What's our next? All right. Someone asked a very good question. Was your hair this length before your last pregnancy or did you achieve this length during the course of all of them? Okay. So my hair started growing. Um, it reached like breast length before I even got pregnant. I mean, I got pictures to prove it. So a lot of people think, oh, you know, hair, your hair is long because of pregnancy. And I think pregnancy did help perhaps. Um, but you know, there's postpartum shedding where you lose a lot of the hair that you grow. I mean, that's the other side of pregnancy. So you can have a lot of hair, but you could also lose a lot of it. And I think, um, the diet that I have, um, and the oils and, and just taking care of my, 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 my external wellness and my internal wellness, that together has really helped me to maintain my hair. Um, I went whole food plant-based, and when that happened, like, my hair was, like, here, chin length. You saw, I mean, actually, it wasn't even chin length. Like, I couldn't even do a ponytail. And then it ended up growing a little bit, growing a little bit, and then it eventually you know, went a little, you know, kind of touching my shoulders. And then before I got pregnant, it was like, it reached like right here, like a little above my breast line, like my chest line, like a little around there. So I was already on a healthy hair journey. Then I got pregnant and my hair continued to grow, lost hair after my first baby, you know, got pregnant again, lost hair after that baby, got pregnant again, lost hair after that baby. But um, God is so good that he's helped me to discover, I kind of uncover, I think, um, a key factor in maintaining your hair growth. And that's that, 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 that combination, the internal and external wellness. And it's worked for me. And I hope that that answers your question. So yes, you don't have to get pregnant in order to um, grow healthy hair. And you can see a lot of sisters on YouTube not just YouTube, but probably in your life, who've never been pregnant one day in their life, and they got longer hair than me. You know what I mean? And it's not like they're quote-unquote mixed because it's genes or something like that. They're just taking care of their hair, and they're taking care of their inter internal wellness. So, yes. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Suki asks, what are some things you can do slash eat if you have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, uh, experiencing thinning, brittle hair, shedding, and hair taking longer to grow? Thank you. I'm so sorry you're going through that, Suki. Um, I know some people in my life, and it's just played a number, and it's just a really, it's just a long battle for a lot of people. Um, I have found, um, I don't know what your diet is like, but I wouldn't sleep on your diet, sweetheart. Um, specifically, um, start eating. I, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but one, if I were you, this is what I would do. Okay. Cause I'm not a doctor, but one thing that I would do is I would begin with a detox. I would try to eliminate anything um, in my body that's not supposed to be there. I might do a juice cleanse. And after I do that, I would introduce a whole food plant-based diet, a.k.a. a diet mainly centered on plants that includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, tubers, nuts, and seeds. It eliminates processed foods foods that are maybe even he very heavy in oil, okay? You want to be, be careful with some of the vegetable oils um, and frying with those oils. Those can wreak havoc in your body. Now, I didn't say don't eat fat. You need fat, okay? Your brain has fat. Your body has fat. God made fat. I believe in fat. I believe in the nuts, the seeds, and avocado. But I don't believe 
And, you know, how it was, you know, for a lot of us growing up, when you're just pouring oil and oil and oil into the pot and you're frying that chicken, like that's not going to be good for you or your arteries or your condition. So, and I would also try to eliminate all animal products as best as possible. I would also look at some of the things that um, can cause, wreak some havoc with, uh, with those who suffer from, hi um, from hyperthyroidism. Gluten is one of them. Um, I have found that some people are very sensitive. I'm actually gluten, mostly gluten-free myself. When I eat gluten, it just does something to me. It just kind of throws me off in a negative way. So um, I would eliminate, if I were you, I would eliminate gluten. Um, I would also maybe go in for an allergy test and see if there are other things that you can't um, eat that don't agree with you. Hike up your vitamin C. Um, and, and make sure you're getting tons of minerals and not just don't don't just focus on the hormonal imbalances, but also look at the vitamin deficiencies that you may have. Maybe do a micronutrient test because you might think that a lot of it is the hyperthyroidism, but it may be in connection to other things like low iron well, for the reason why, you know, the reason why your hair is, is going through it. You know, or do you have enough zinc in your system? All those things are going to help you uncover why you're um, experiencing a lot of hair loss. And one of the things you can do to kind of rebalance your, your, your body um, is trying a detox. I know it helps a lot of people. It kind of like gives people a blank page again. Um, so you can start to introduce things with like in a clean slate without um, stuff to stop you from absorbing uh, the nutrients from the new foods you'll be eating. So I hope that helps. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go on for like maybe five more minutes here. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see here. Okay, Sabrina, how often should you drink smoothies to jump, uh, jump your journey, to jump start your journey? And does the frequency of smoothie consumption adjust when you reach a healthy state? Beautiful question. So some people like to do juice detoxes, but some people would rather do smoothie detoxes. I've never done like a smoothie detox, but I've rather done like lots of smoothies in my diet. But um, sometimes I do a juice detox where I do like one to three days on just strictly juices. In fact, um, I'm really I'm really excited because um, it's it's something that I plan to do after I stop breastfeeding. And, um, so I'm just excited because I just, I love my strictly, you know, my, my strict, my strict juice, but you know, when you're breastfeeding, that's not something you want to do. You want to introduce the juices, um, in addition to the food that you're already eating. Um, but anyways, back to that topic, you want to make sure that you're doing enough where you start to see a difference. If you're doing, um, you know what I what I would love to know, Sabrina, is if you do you plan on only doing strictly smoothies when you ask me this? I think you're saying that you're introducing smoothies in addition to your regular food. Okay, so the smoothies are gonna make a huge difference for you, but the package is in the foods that you're also eating. Okay. So a lot of the the food that you're you're blending up like the raw food, you want to eat that as well. You want to make that like the bulk of, of what you're eating. Again, going right back to your fruits, your vegetables, um, your whole grains, your tubers. And I say tubers like, you know, like yucca or root food, like that food that grows in the ground, um, nuts and seeds. So I, I really don't know how much you would need, sweetheart. That's something that I think you have to kind of experience on your own. But I would say at least a smoothie a day if you're trying to see, um, like, you're, if you're trying to see results from it. One thing that I do sometimes when I can't have a salad, I'll just juice, I'll just, you know, smoothie it up. I'll put all my kale with my seeds, 
maybe throw in some pineapple and blend that up and drink it. At least I know that I had something raw. If you do that at least every day, you'll start to see results, I think. And then you want to ask yourself, what are the results you want to see? Is it, is it, you know, is it because you want to open your bowels? Well, are you going to the bathroom after you're having one a day? Maybe that's enough for you. And once you start to feel like, okay, I'm comfortable. I lost the weight that I wanted to lose. I got rid of a lot of the crud in my stomach. You know, my skin is clearer now. My, I'm starting to see some hair growth. And maybe you can taper down a little. Or maybe you continue to see maximum results. Okay. And for me, I did adjust like, when I did my, when I was like on the beginning of my journey and I was doing a lot of the juice, a lot of the juice, like once I start to feel, I felt like I was in a healthier place because juicing can be kind time consuming. That one thing I do is I juice like a, I bulk it out. So I'll probably juice tons on one day and then I'll have it for the next three days or something like that. Cause I ain't got time to be juicing every day. Um, but once, once I felt like I was in a, in a, in a healthier place, then I, I tapered down and sometimes my stress levels go up depending on the season of my life. And then I'll kind of like amp it up again. So it's really, it really depends on who you are, what you're going through and what you want to see. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. here thanks for sticking with me tonight ladies and gents if we have some gents on here my husband said yeah I do hey bros okay wow it's amazing when I see all these comments and I'm like, yeah, y'all actually came out like, man, it makes me feel so, so blessed. Oh, I see a really cool comment. My baby from Kim, my baby hair started growing back while fasting. I was so shocked because they have been damaged for years and now looking healthy. Praise God. That's wonderful, sweetheart. My body did a lot of repairing while fasting. Yeah. The body repairs a lot when you fast. I ain't gonna lie. I know, like, that's that's like my kryptonite. Pamela, I missed where on the Choosing My Health website I could find the oil combos. Okay, my husband said he took care of that. Okay. Oh, I think I'm missing a lot of stuff here. And forgive me if I've missed a question there are, there is, I wish you guys could see what I see. There are so many wonderful comments and questions here. So I'm looking for the ones that have a cue. That's how I know for sure. Um, and if I missed a question, I'll do my very best. Um, if you post it in the replay, I'll do my very best uh, to answer it there. Let me see. Okay, Metallic Maniac asks, how long should a juicer last? Six months, one year, or longer? Honey, your juicer should last longer than a year. I had a juicer that lasted me. How long did it last us, honey? Our first one, the Breville. Over 10 years. <laughs> so if you got a juicer <laughs> that's lasted you for six months, <laughs> mm-mm. Mm -mm. My, my, so I did a Breville. It was the most affordable for me. Um, that lasted for 10, about 10 years. Like literally I used it until that junk broke. I used it a lot and it blessed me, blessed my husband, blessed my children. Um, and then I was blessed later on to get the Nama J2 juicer. And that juicer is amazing because it's kind of like hands off. Like you could literally like put food in it. And it kind of juices on its own. Like, it's incredible. But um, that one, um, it's going strong. It's been over a year and it's working beautifully. 
and I juice with it all the time. I know others who have that that juicer. It is a pretty penny, but if you want to juice and you're looking for high quality juicing, um, or rather juices, the Nama J2 is a great one. But I mean, there are other amazing ones out there as well, but it should last longer. Okay, let me see. Okay, Suki, you asked, what about wearing wigs as a protective style? <clears throat> hey, girl, do your do. If if you need to wear a wig, um, if you're 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 a working woman, you out there and you just don't have all the time in the day to do you know the styles with your hair that you need to, and you would rather just wear a wig, you know, do it. I got some wigs too, um, and wigs can be really helpful, especially if you don't want to uh, touch your hair if you don't have the time. What I would say about wigs though is you need to find one that doesn't hurt your scalp like there are some that I have tried and I know people have tried like they literally they're like <laughs> and it really really hurts and it's like wearing that the entire day how can you possibly not experience some type of scalp damage um and then you know making sure that your hair is properly plaited or you have something on that's going to protect your hair um and that it's loose enough where you're not feeling like you're experiencing hair damage like you're you're gonna know like or rather um hair follicle damage you're gonna know if it hurts you then something's off but yeah you could definitely wear wigs like if wigs work for you do it girl okay uh, okay let me see okay someone asked me how about omega fats yes um omegas are wonderful you can get them in walnuts chia seeds uh flax seed very very good and um the reason why i love flax seeds or just seeds in general, um, hemp seeds, like all of those are really high in omegas. I love them because you can quickly just put them in a smoothie and, you know, call it a wrap and you got your omegas. If you feel like you're really low in omegas, omegas you can also do a an omega-3 um, or, you know, a, a full spectrum omega quality supplement that you can take daily if you need that. I know that's been very helpful to some people as well. All right, I think I am gonna call it a night. Um, how, how was this for you guys? I know there are a lot of questions here that I still didn't get to, and I apologize if I didn't get to them, but listen, just drop them, just drop them in the replay. And um, I will go back and I will do my best to go on there and to answer um, these questions. And like I said to you guys, I want to pray for you because I can give you all of this amazing information, but the true healing comes from a man named Jesus Christ. That's where it is. I can't tell you anything different. I'm not going to lie because it's really him that I pray to Jesus that did the miracle for me. You know, I'm, I'm actually, I feel impressed to share this testimony. Can I, can I share a testimony, please? There was a time in my life where I had an uncle who got very, very sick. Um, he got so sick that he had family fly in for his funeral. They were expecting for him to die. I was maybe 15 years old. It was so bad that he was in a coma and he had pus running through his veins. During this season of my life, I knew about God. I know I knew I had family members who knew about God, but I didn't really know him, know him, know him for myself. Um, and my mom said to me, hey, we need to pray. And I'll never forget it. Um, at that moment, I was like, pray. 
like this man is getting ready for his funeral. But we decided to pray. And I, I'll never forget getting on my knees with my brother and my mother. And we began to call on the name of Jesus. We began to see miracles after that. Because after we called on the name of Jesus with our childlike faith, my mother received a call from the hospital. And you know what they said to her? She was expecting to hear that he was dead. But they said he woke up from his coma. A miracle has happened. And he just asked the nurse for something to eat. Y'all, I cannot come here and not talk about Jesus and his power to heal. Yes, doctors can do some things, but they can only do so much. Yes, plants can do some things, but they can only do so much. The root of the healing is Jesus. And I know this might sound heretical to some people, okay? And you don't have to subscribe to my philosophy, but I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And I'm going to pray for you. We're all free to believe what we want to believe, and it's okay. But I've, ne I've yet to, to meet a person who's turned down prayer. I've met many people who are like, I don't believe in God, but sure, you know, pray. And, and I still do because I believe that there's an energy, uh, energy attached to that. And if it's, for, if it's only to let that person know that they are loved by God, I think it's worth it. So I want to pray for you guys tonight, and I want to call on that. Uh, on that God, Jesus, the one who healed my uncle after so many, a gamut of things didn't heal him um, because I know that there is power in prayer. And I believe tonight that there's deliverance for someone here. Okay. I did not come here to look pretty or act cute. I came here to try to bring transformation. And if you read the pillars of CMH, when you go there, I'll tie, you know, you'll see, you know, our website, there's nutrition, there's plant-based plant -based education, and there's inspiration. And that's one thing that I've committed to this year, to give more of that inspiration, because I feel like a lot of us, we know what to do, but a lot of us are depressed. We can't get up in the morning. We don't have hope for the future, and we feel like, you know, what's the point of living? And that's when you need someone to tell you, hey, I'm cheering you on. Jesus loves you. Let me pray for you. You can do this. And that's what I want to do for you right now. All right. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you so much for this, this hair live, this Q&A that we had. Um, I feel like it went in a blink of an eye, but we've been well over an hour and it's been amazing, Lord, um, the questions you've been able to answer. But tonight I come with another request. God, speak. Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that you would heal some man and some woman tonight that is going through a hard time. They've just been diagnosed with some type of illness. Maybe they're watching from their hospital bed. Maybe they have a friend or family member in the hospital struggling right now. Struggling right now. I pray that you, Father, in the name of Jesus, would go to them by their bedside Visit that person wherever they are, whether they're in the bathroom, whether they're in the bedside, whether they're in their tele watching through their television, their laptop, their, their phone. I pray that the healing, the healing of Jesus Christ would touch them right now, God. I pray that if there's any demon that is caught casting a light on them or a darkness on them, rather, to not want to even live, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Because after all is said and done, like really, when we look back, we would have realized that everything was really vanity. Like, what did we really live for? Lord, we want to be saved. And I know this may sound weird and strange to some people, but you, I pray that you visit them where they are right now. And you heal them, save them from themselves, from from the, from the things that they feel like they cannot get the victory over. Someone is insecure tonight. Someone feels like they don't have purpose. Someone feels like they don't have a reason to live, Lord. You're telling me right now that someone, you're saying it to me in my spirit, that someone wants to commit suicide on this chat. I don't know who it is, but you know who you are. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus that you have victory. I declare that there was purpose for your life. I declare 
that you have healing and that God is going to use you to do amazing things. I declare that someone needs you. There is someone who has low iron and they've tried many times, many times to find healing. I pray in the name of Jesus that you give them that healing right now. You tell them what they need to absorb that iron. And you give them the victory and that they would be able to share their testimony. We just thank you for tonight. We thank you for those who have blessed us financially. Father, I pray that you restore 100 fold into their lives. And if there is someone who wanted to give perhaps, but they don't even have enough to buy food, God. I'll pray in the name of Jesus that you pay their bills and that you give them a financial miracle. In fact, after this live, that they would see something different in their bank account is my prayer. And I pray, I pray it boldly. God, we just thank you for tonight. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak because there are many people who did not wake up today. There are many times I could have been dead, but I'm alive. I pray that you would continue to use me to be a blessing and that you would bless every single person who showed up on this live tonight. Give them what they need. I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I pray that God, I pray that God, my husband's like, play some music, please. <laughs> I pray that God would bless you. I pray that he would shine his, his face upon you. If you guys are interested in the oils and the products that I'm making, check out. Let me put it up. Where is it? Press the door. I only see one link. Okay, right here. You can sign up for the product release details. Choose 